racks, run another one. <laughs> and we're definitely going to be touching on all different subjects here. Right? Yeah. Before we do that, tell me about growing up life. Like, what part of the city do you represent as far as the the, the, the six? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I don't necessarily rep a hood, mm -hmm. but I grew up in Jaden Falstaff. Okay. You know, um, growing up as a kid, I grew up in Jaden Falstaff. I lived in the middle building. There was three buildings. I grew up on the second floor in Jaden Falstaff. I went to school at. Um, up on Jane and Eglinton up there mm -hmm. called Roseland, Roseland Public School as a kid. I went there as a kid. Um, growing up, it was like a rough, it was a rough neighborhood that mm -hmm. time, you know, and there was just a lot of gang violence and stuff like that going on. So yeah. I was really like, my mom was really reserved with me and my sister. We were always indoor. I never had the luxury of riding a bike outside, going to the park. Like we were always indoor not even like trick-or-treating nothing You're right we're just always indoor the only time i was able to like step out and have fun is if i'm going to go visit my cousins or something or stay at my uncle's house somewhere in a better area in toronto you know yeah yeah but um yeah that's where i grew up and then right before high school i moved to mississauga okay and then i went to high school in mississauga dope dope give me um, a fond memory from back in those times <sighs> From the from like when I was a kid, yeah, I remember. I begged my mom for a bike. She got me a bike. I wasn't allowed to ride it outside, so I had to ride it in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> so I was riding my bike up and down like every day. I'd be like, "Oh, can I ride my bike? Okay, I'll go in the hallway, ride it up and down." Yeah. And you know, one day I was so smart that I decided to go in the hallway with my socks on, and you know. These are like hood buildings, like I'm running up, kids are running up. Mm -hmm. I put my socks on, I got on my bike, and I started riding it. Then I get off my bike, and I remember I was going to chase my sister down the hallway. Mm -hmm. As soon as I get up, boom, I step in a big chunk of glass <sighs> in the hallway. A beer, uh, there was a broken beer bottle in mm. the hallway. And I stepped in, I started screaming. I started screaming so loud, my mom ran out. She had to pick me up then carry me back into their uh, into the bedroom and then she wow. pulled out the big chunk of glass out of my foot oh my god it was like i will never forget that she pulled out the glass and then after that she was like oh, all your privileges in the hallway are over you guys are not allowed to play in the hallway anymore wow. and that was for months until she was like okay you guys can go back yeah but like it took a long time for my foot to heal and it was just i, I lost all my privileges wow <laughs> it sucked and like you're growing up in that <laughs> Falstaff area, right? Yeah. Like as you started getting older, like because as you mentioned before, that's a crazy area, yeah. right? A lot of different things going on and stuff like that. Like, were you getting into a lot of stuff out there, or you were able to get no, away from that I was stuff? So reserved. My mom wouldn't let us do nothing. Like, you know, I, I wasn't able to do nothing. I was just always indoor. Only when I go to school or go to my friend's house if I'm allowed to. Mm -hmm. And that was that. Like. I seen everything that went around in the in the whole area. There was like shootings, killings, all this stuff going on, drug dealing. My mom just was scared that her two daughters, because I have one sister, mm -hmm. would fall into that. Yeah, so yeah. As soon as she could, she moved us out of that area right before high school, and mm -hmm. then I went to high school in Mississauga. Okay, okay. <laughs> so as a as a quote unquote, right? Mm -hmm. um, hood chick, right? Hood chick, yeah. Because you're coming from Falstaff, right? Yeah. Now you're Everybody in... gets shocked. They're like, oh my God, I thought you were a suburbs chick. <laughs> well, like... the thing is, you went to Saga. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That must have been a culture shock. Super culture shock. Like, I literally, for that time, hated my mom for moving me out, which made no sense because mm -hmm. it's like, I'm living in a building with cockroach and mice. Yeah. And I'm going to a big house, big fancy house in Mississauga now. And I'm not happy because mm. I don't want to lose all my friends now. And, you know, how am I going to adapt to make new friends? Yeah. And, you know, now we now we come to the city. I don't know nobody. Mm. I don't have no friends, no nothing. And I got a bike now that I could actually ride outside. Yeah. 
it was it was a huge difference. I was allowed to play outside. I was allowed to do stuff. Mm -hmm. Something I wasn't even able to do living in Falstaff. So it yeah. was a huge change. But I don't know. It, it was it was a huge change. Something for me to just adapt to. So you know. how did the kids take to you over there? As being somebody that like you know you're coming. You probably were a little bit more rough around the edges those times too, no? Yeah, right? I was. Yeah, I mean, I did make friends fast down there, but as much as I like made friends in high school, there was a lot of people that didn't like me, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I'm used to that, you know. I wasn't the most popular kid in school or nothing like that. I was very like low key to myself, very reserved. Had one two friends. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I kind of like straight away after a while because, you know, a lot of things happened in high school. And then, yeah, like grade 10, I ended up right before grade 11. I ended up dropping out of high school. OK. Yeah. What prompted that? Having my son. I got uh. pregnant with a boyfriend, with my first boyfriend. OK. Um, when I was in grade 10. And... Um, yeah, to make a long story short, I, I decided to keep my child and I ended up dropping out of school because I was just scared of all the criticism everybody yeah. would make upon me, you know? So yeah. I just left school, tried to do homeschooling, and then after that I gave up. I was like, fuck this shit. Okay, okay. <laughs> so then as you started, like, you transitioned, you, you left high school, okay? Yeah. Um, you got to this point where... You got s super popular all over the place. Okay. Yeah. So how did you get into the hip hop world in the first place? Like before doing music, because mm -hmm. I know you're always, you, you, were you always doing music this whole time? Um, as a hobby before I was doing music, um, but I wasn't serious. It mm -hmm. was nothing serious. It was just like little songs here and there yeah nothing serious you know yeah 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 mm -hmm. so okay you said at some point you started getting into dancing and stuff like that mm -hmm. okay give me the first experience when you first walked into the club for the first time to to to, to, to work oh my gosh you're gonna die okay so before even the dancing mm -hmm. like i was already on the club scene like from when I was like 18 like I used to do like even before the dancing I was doing like all age parties and stuff mm -hmm. I was a promoter like, okay I did like club promotions for events and stuff oh and then I was doing the modeling stuff like on the side so I was already kind of like on the scene per se right mm -hmm. and then as for the dancing oh god that takes like a long story the reason why I even started dancing in the first place is because I have my son you know I need to take care of my son i need to make money i have to feed him i have to do like these are responsibilities a mother has and mm -hmm. I'm, me as a single mother i can't do everything on my own i needed extra means yeah that time i was working a regular nine to five job in the mall when i was about eight 19 years old mm -hmm. i was working at marciano okay i don't know if you heard of marciano yeah yeah, yeah. guess there, yeah guess at eden center i worked there and it was boxing day and um my manager was pissing me the fuck off and she was just being a bitch to me and I was just like, I'm done. I'm mm, done. I quit. Yeah. I quit. I leave because she tried to give me some like garbage job. Mm -hmm. And m I'm a sales person. Like yeah. I'm not a garbage man. Right. So <laughs> I was like, fuck this. I ain't taking out the trash. Mm -hmm. I laughed. I quit. I went back home. And I just said, like, it just hit me. I'm like, I'm going to be a stripper. Fuck this shit. I need to make my own money. I'm going to be a stripper. Right. And then I googled stripper mm -hmm. looked and seen where i could strip and then i'm like i found it so i'm like okay i'm gonna go somewhere far away from home nobody will find me right so i go to london ontario wow <laughs> you went far i went to london ontario at um house of lancaster at mm -hmm. that time so i take a greyhound bus this is a true story mm -hmm. i take the greyhound bus i get there i literally have like like 50 bucks like in my name like so I get there now and I go and I say, hi, I want to like work here. I want to like, how do I, how can I work here? Yeah. And they're like, are you looking to bartend? Are you looking to be a waitress? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm looking to be a stripper. Mm. And they're like, okay, well, all you need is like $20, an outfit and a piece of ID. Mm. I'm like, really? 
I ain't had no outfit. I went to Walmart and got some sort of lingerie down <laughs> down the street. <laughs> okay. And I came back. I had like 50 bucks. I bought some for like twenty, thirty dollars there, came back, gave him twenty bucks. Mm-hmm. And I worked my first night, the same day. And that night I was so nervous. I just remember sitting down for a good hour, evaluating what everybody else is doing. Mm-hmm. I see some girl on on the stage doing whatever. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna mimic whatever she's doing. Right, it's gotta be a piece of cake. A guy is throwing dollar bills. I want to go up, mm-hmm. right? So finally, I get my chance. I go up. I'm nervous as hell, but as the first song goes, you know, I get more into it. Right, and then some like old man came to the stage and he was like, gave me a tip. Mm-hmm. So that boosted me to go harder. I'm like, hey, I got ten dollars, like. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it do what it do right now because yeah, sure. shit this is I'm making money like yeah. I'm making more money than Marciano, so I do that. Then the same customer that tips me on the stage takes me to the back for a dance. I don't even know where the back was. I had to ask him like, he's like, "Can I take you for a dance?" I'm like, "Take me where?" Wow. He's like, "Over there." I'm like, "Okay, twenty dollars." Okay, we go. He dances. I must have danced like three songs as I remember. I made 60 bucks plus I got the $10 tip. I'm like, hey, this is 70 bucks. I'm just getting started. Mm-hmm. This is more money than That's this a good is gonna be more money than my paycheck by the end of the night. Yeah. By the end of the night, I made like three, four hundred bucks around that. I was like, I thought I hit the jackpot. Right. I was throwing up money. And they had and the way that this club was like, they had a hotel above the club. Mm. So it was like Okay, I'm gonna spend the weekend, so I pay like forty bucks. I could stay in one of the rooms as a dancer upstairs. Right. So by the time I pay the fee, I give them the forty bucks. I go upstairs. I'm Gucci, mm. and I got like almost like three hundred dollar profit. And I'm yeah. like, oh, my paychecks are usually like eight hundred bucks every two weeks. Right. And I made like half of that in one night. I never went back. 